when they uh, purchased property. Oh, okay. Uh, because they wanted to make sure that the property was transferred to who they wanted it to. A lot of my younger clients are new uh, parents, mm -hmm. where the first children have been born, um, and they want to ensure that the people they've picked to become the guardian in the event that both of them were to pass away is the person. Because in their, that situation, uh, there's usually multiple family members and grandparents might fight over who would be better. And really, this is something that, um, you know, I've been to many continuing education classes where we talk about the importance of selecting a guardian is the guardian should be who most reflects your parenting style. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my family is, is a small, you know, 1970s nuclear family with my mom and my dad, my sister and I. Um, when my sister gave birth to my nephew, there was never a question that I was not going to be the guardian because she's a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. And, <laughs> what a family. That's awesome. I know, and, and, and that's the thing is, is I, I lived in a condominium in Seattle and she and her husband and son lived out in... Um, rural areas with with horses and multiple horses and livestock and and farm or barn cats and dogs and and that's the life that they want so their guardian when they when they established a guardian was someone who was going to continue the life that they wanted sure. and i get to continue in my role as uncle brent and um, not have to because again if someone's parents have died mm -hmm. you know they're going to be suffering enough than to have to have a complete change of lifestyle. Absolutely. Um, you know, take take a 10-year-old that's used to living out on the farm and put them in the middle of the city and they're going to have even more matters to overcome and deal with. And so, you know, that's where I have younger clients. But I've also had clients that have come to me that are in their 60s um, that uh, have never had a will. And what it is for them is they're starting to realize their friends and sure. neighbors that they've known for, for years are starting to pass. And they've probably seen what happens when there isn't a will. And that's where they'll call me and say, I just don't want what happened to neighbor Bob to happen to my family. Sure. Yeah. And what, so, what would you say to somebody that says, well, I mean, it's just me. You know, we don't really have anything. Um, how important really is that? And that's, that's a very good question. And that's where I ask them some basic questions about what they mean by they have nothing. If they have, because Washington State allows for what's called the small estate affidavit. Ooh. And that is for estates under $100,000 in total value, they um, get to go through a process that's not probate. You don't have to get the courts involved. You can do an affidavit. And so if, for example, say for example, you rented an apartment and truly you had no assets not a, or you had one car that's worth two thousand dollars you have no real estate property no investments nothing else and then a bank account with just forty thousand dollars in savings because oh, you'd been smoke. you'd been saving up and that's what you'd been living off to supplement sure. your income that estate could be handled through a small estate affidavit where you go into the bank you and and it really is a simple form that just in essence says this is a small estate. We're not going through probate. I am the next lawful heir. Um, and that money comes to me. But what I would also say is that goes to a person. If you were in that situation mm -hmm. and you, your next living relative is your fourth cousin and you would rather give your estate and the money that you have left to a church or a charity or cat and, or, or your dog well i'm glad you brought that up that's yeah. actually the cat and dog can be the recipient and can be the beneficiary as long as there's a human that is designated to the, the uh, care to care to take yes see yeah. there's still hope for you bill yes well that's roger was just talking about that too yeah huh. but that that is um that's the thing is is i i talk to people and and i have also walked into clients and said you know, I looked at what they had because some people will say, oh, well, Brent, I need to do this because my will is from 1988. Mm -hmm. And I'll come and I'll look at it and say, are all these, you know, decisions you've made still the same? And they'll say, yes. I said, then you actually are fine. 
you know, having a will that's old doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. But sure. not know, the biggest problem is not knowing what's in it. Mm-hmm. So when I talk, if a client calls me up and they, because a friend said, oh, you really should call Brent. And I appreciate those. But I'll ask, do you have will? Yeah. Can you tell me what's in it? No. You have no idea. That is That is a bigger problem for me that people, you know, these are not legal documents that are written in Cyrillic. You should be able to read it and see, you know, even if you can't follow along with every single clause, but in there, it should be very clear. I give my estate to insert name here. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know what they're giving to, then that's a problem for me. And that's where I work with everyone to understand what's in place. So I want to call you. How do I get in contact with you? You know, my phone number is 425-830-5134. I'm happy to work with anyone in Washington State. Um, I am licensed under the Washington State Bar Association. Uh, I do have a Facebook page, which is bwrconsults.com. Uh, or you can look me up on Facebook, BWR Consulting, PLLC. Um, I have discovered the joys of Facebook Live and have made a few videos. <laughs> uh-huh. I, awesome. Yes, I had a, a great uh, promotion in August, September, where uh, for new clients and referral sources, because I, I like to show my appreciation as a small business owner um, to not just my clients, but to the people who refer to me and realizing that that is as much essential as the actual clients themselves. As someone that believes in the work that I do, believes in my knowledge base, and knowing that I would be someone that can take care of their friends, their families, their coworkers. And so I'm always doing something to put out new information or share what I'm finding in the law. Um, for example, just a couple days ago. We're, we're almost out of time, Brett, but go oh, ahead. Oh, I can do it real quick. Okay. I would tell anyone that has elderly loved ones to Google how the elderly lose their rights. This is an article that was written by Rachel Aviv from the New Yorker magazine. It was published on October 9th. Mm-hmm. It tells a real harrowing story of what the laws are in Nevada. In Nevada. And um, also talks about other states where people go to retire, such as Florida, New Mexico, and Arizona. It's something I sent to my own parents and we'll definitely be working on to ensure it doesn't happen in Washington State. Wonderful. Well, Candace, this is this is the time that we give Candace because we all know she's going to take the last word anyway. So Candace, go ahead and close our show today. Well, first of all, thank you for being on our show and I hope you come back again. We're definitely gonna invite you. Um, please, if, you, um, if you're listening, and you haven't done a will and you've got questions and you want to reach out to Brent, please call him at 425-830-5134. So we're just going to wrap it up. That's a wrap. In Thanks the, for showing up today. I'm glad that your caregivers brought you in on well, time. I know they brought me in the time. I feel so much better now because my bill collectors that I've made, you know, officially the the uh, estate winners over this. Now I know how to get it done in my, my you know, power of attorney and wills and everything. That's wonderful. Of course, I keep to dying con- off, but that's, you know, that's If not you're wanting problem. to contact Candace, go ahead and give what, me a call what, at 253-961-7525. And get the busy Beat signal to today. Yes, isn't that <laughs> wonderful? If you have any ideas for our show, we're really happy to read them. Of course, you can get a hold of us at your disruptors, C-R-O-S, at gmail.com. Until we see you again, or oh, wait a minute, hear from you again, Candace wants to say goodbye. Goodbye, Heba smiling. <laughs> okay. We'll see you all next time, and it's been a lot of fun.